Welcome. In this video, we're going to use the limit definition of the definite integral to calculate the integral from 0 to 2 of x squared dx using right endpoints. So let's start by writing this out using the limit definition. So we have the integral from 0 to 2 of x squared dx is equal to the limit as n approaches infinity of the sum from n equals 1, excuse me, not n, what am I saying? i equals 1 to n of f of x i delta x where x i is the right end point of each integral. And as a refresher, we saw this in a previous video, but as a refresher, if we've broken up our region on, well, the, um, the x-axis below our region from a to b where x, excuse me, a equals x naught, and this is x1, x2, and I'm gonna erase here in the middle just to demonstrate that we don't really know what's going on in between here, all the way to xn minus one, b is xn, then I have the intervals x naught comma x1, that's one interval. Another interval is x1 comma x2. So on all the way to xn minus one, xn. And then my right end points, which rep are represented by that xi, are these ones that I'm underlining here. So basically, we're just looking at our n sub intervals, and I should label these. And we're looking at just the rightmost endpoint of n intervals. And I have just set this up using the limit definition. So let's figure out first, what is delta x? Since right now I have a bunch of symbols here, and I want to replace this um, with things we can do some algebra on. So let's start with this question. One, what is delta x? Well, if you recall, delta x is equal to b minus a over n. So in this case, I'm going from 0 to 2. So I really shouldn't have a here. This value here is 0. So our number line is going from 0 to 2. And I don't know what n is. I know I'm just breaking this interval up into n intervals. So I'm going from 0 to 2. So 2 is my b minus 0 over n. So delta x is 2 over n. Next, we need to determine what are the right endpoints. Well, let's look at this number line we sketched already. And in fact, just to make things easier, I'm going to sketch it again. So we're starting off at x0 equals 0, and we're going all the way to xn equals 1. And I'm breaking this up into n intervals. And again, I'm going to leave this blank here so I don't have to show anything that implies that I have a certain number of intervals. So I don't know what n is. So from x0, we know the width. So that is this value here. This is the width. The width of this interval is 2 over n. And the width of this interval is also 2 over n. So for our first interval, we're starting off here. So this is x1, x1 is going to equal our previous x naught plus 2 over n. What about x2? Well, by the time we get to x2, we've started at x naught, and we've added 2 over n once, twice. So x2 equals x naught plus, now when I wrote a 2 here, when I meant to write an n, plus 2 over n times 2, since we've added two copies of 2 over n. So let's do one more of these and see if we can start making out what the pattern is going to be. x3 is going to equal x0 plus 2 over n. And how many 2 over n's did we add? We added this first one, this second one, and now we're adding one more. This is also 2 over n here. So let's multiply this by 3. Do you see a pattern here? So xi is equal to x naught plus 2 over n times i. For the first interval, the first right endpoint of x1, we've added 2 over n one time. 
So notice this subscript matches whatever number we're multiplying to 2 over n. For x2, we've multiplied by 2 since we added 1, 2 interval widths. For x3, we multiply by 3 since we've added 1, 2, 3 interval widths. And if we're here at the ith interval, by then we've added 1, 2, 3, 4, 6, yada, yada, all the way. We've added i intervals by the time we get to the ith interval, which is why we have this here. And now the one last thing we need to fix is xi is equal to, and remember we said x naught is equal to zero, so I can just ignore that, and we just end up with 2i over n. So let me rewrite this. So I'm gonna rewrite this here, and then I'm gonna make some space in the screen so I can actually show the integration work. So here I have the integral from zero to two, x squared dx, and remember we are denoting this as the area under x squared from zero to two, so this is the limit as n approaches infinity of the sum from i equals 1 to n f f of x i times delta x. And I can continue simplifying this. Remember, remember x i's represent the right endpoints, but we know that x i equals 2 i over n. So this is f evaluated at 2 i over n times delta x, and delta x we figured out is 2 over n, so let's multiply by 2 over n. And let's do one more rewrite. So we have the limit as n approaches infinity of the sum from i equals 1 to n, and now what is my function f evaluated at 2i over n? So really quickly, f of x is equal to x squared since that's here. So that's where f of x comes from. So these correspond so that means all I need to do is replace this x here with a 2i over n. So this is 2i over n quantity squared times 2 over n. Now I'm going to take a moment real fast to rearrange my screen just so there's more space to write. All right, so as you can see, I started off with this integral. I wrote it using our limit definition of the definite integral, and then I figured out what each right endpoint was, 2i over n, and then we also found what delta x is, and then we evaluated our function f at every right, inter, um, every right endpoint of each interval, which gave us 2i over n quantity squared. So now we can finish solving this. So the integral from 0 to 2 of x squared dx is equal to the limit as n approaches infinity of the sum from i equals 1 to n of 8i squared over n cubed. Now if you notice, our summation is only with respect to i, so everything else can be brought out to the front of the summation. So this becomes the limit as n approaches infinity of 8 over n cubed times the sum from i equals 1 to n of i squared. And then you may not have seen this before, so I'm going to put this here as an aside. And some of you might have seen this in your pre-calculus class, some of you might not. It all depends on where you took pre-calculus. But this sum, the sum from i equals 1 to n of i squared can be shown to be n times n plus 1 times 2n plus 1 divided by 6. So let's do that. So I have the limit as n approaches infinity of 8 over n cubed times n times n plus 1 times 2n plus 1 divided by 6. And now all that is left to do is simplify this. I'm not going to go over the algebra from one step to another, so please pause the video now and see if you can simplify this. All right, you should have paused the video. And what you will end up with is the limit as n approaches infinity of 8 over 3 plus 4 over n plus 4 over 3n squared. And again, if you don't see this and you didn't pause the video, then now it's time to pause the video and work out the algebra from this step to this step. Now this becomes a fairly simple limit problem. As n approaches infinity, this quantity will approach 0, and this quantity will approach 0, so we're just left with 8 over 3. That tells me that the integral from 0 to 2 of x squared dx is equal to 8 over 3, 
visually, since we've just been talking about areas, we should see what this actually means. So I'm going to open up GeoGebra and show you what this means. All right, so what I've done so far is I've just graphed this. Right now we have f of x equals x squared. And what we want to find is what the is the area starting at 0. Let's see, can I point to it? Oh, yeah, so starting at 0 all the way to 2. And GeoGebra can figure that out for us. So integral, oops, I'm going to type in integral here. So I typed in the word integral, then I'm going to type in the letter f and then comma, zero comma two, and hit enter. And that gives me this area is 2.67. Well, clearly eight divided by three is 2.67. So we ended up with the same answer here. The area under the curve x squared from zero to two is equal to eight thirds, which is about 2.67. In the next videos, we're going to discuss some techniques to make integration easier. You don't always have to use this limit definition.